Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Alex. I'm a music producer primarily specializing in the rock and pop genres. And today we're going to be taking a look at how to export the tracks in your session to be able to share them with another collaborator or engineer. So in this video, I'm using Ableton Live 11, but the overarching concepts for this are gonna be pretty much universal through most DAWs. So while the windows and key commands may be a little different, the big principles are gonna remain about the same. So let's take a look at the session that I have pulled up. So as you can see here, I have several tracks inside of this session and I'm going to just be exporting these out so I can share them with other people, whether that's for more collaboration or for a mixing engineer. Now there are a few different ways to do this, but first and foremost, you want to communicate with the person that you're going to be sending this to. Make sure that what they're asking for is what you're going to be supplying. There's a trend nowadays of using the term stems versus multi-tracks interchangeably, and that's not completely correct. So for a quick explanation of the differences between the two, multi-tracks are going to be literally every single track that you have in your session exported out individually. So for example, if you have six different rhythm guitars, you're gonna export six different tracks for those guitars. Whereas the stem is going to be more of a broad level export. So just guitars, for example, and in that stem would be contained contained all six of those guitar tracks. Now, why would you want these separately? Well, for individual tracks, you obviously have a little bit more control on the mixing end of it. You can tweak everything individually, but for stems, you have a little greater control over just easy tweaking for things. If you just wanna say, yeah, the guitars need to be you know, two decibels lower than they are in the mix that you provided, you can just grab that fader for all of the guitars and turn that down. Now, more recently, stem mastering has become pretty popular, and essentially what that is, is that rather than giving a mastering engineer just a stereo two-track bounce of your song for them to master, you're giving them all the stems, so they have a little broader control over the individual elements of the song from a bigger picture perspective, so they can't really say, you know, I want to turn down that rhythm guitar just a tad, but they can turn down all the guitars separately and maybe EQ those entirely separate than, say, the drums. This gets into some interesting debates about how deep that is involved in the mix and whether that's changing some of the artistic vision of the mixing engineer, but that's a topic for another day. So for this video, I'm going to show you how to export the multi-tracks and also show you how to do some stem exporting as well. So the easiest way in Ableton Live to export every single track individually is to just highlight everything in your session that you want exported. So you can see here I have the start and then the end markers already set. You can go up to file and then export audio or video. Also, you can use command shift R. This brings up this window here where it shows a few different things. Now, typically, if you just wanna export everything in your session as a two track, you'd wanna do your master. But if you click on this drop down menu, you can see there's a few different selections. If we go to all individual tracks, it's going to export every single track in your session. Now, stepping through this menu, we can double check that the length is correct of what we're exporting. Make sure your markers are correct and you have a few different rendering options below. Now by default, all of these are all turned off, so the main things that you wanna pay attention to are your sample rate, and with this, you can just choose whichever sample rate you've either recorded the session in, it has this little speaker icon next to it, or if somebody requests it at a different sample rate, you can convert it to say 44.1. You can see down here, there's a section for PCM and to encode PCM. Really what this is, is this stands for pulse code modulation. This is just a format of how to export audio from digital to analog in an uncompressed format. I typically do wave, that way it's just an uncompressed file that anybody can drop into their session. You can also set your bit depth. I usually have mine at 24 bits and then your dither option. These are typically the settings that I record and export with, but you can always talk with whoever you're sending these to and see if they need it in a different format. For this, we're not gonna bother encoding an MP3 because that's just going to compress some of the files and we want them full fidelity as we're exporting them. And we're also not going to export a video. So if we go ahead and click export with every option as it is on this screen right now, what this is gonna do is bring up a dialogue menu and ask where you wanna save these to. I have them going in this folder that I've just titled all tracks. And with this menu, whatever you type in this top level menu here is going to be preceding the title in every single file. So if we name this song one, and hit save, what this is going to do is now export every one of these tracks and then call it song one overhead, song one kick in, song one kick out, etc. Then you can see on this menu here, if you've recorded at a different bit depth than you're exporting at, it's going to use that dithering option to convert these. So now that this is all done, we can open up the folder that we save these to. So now you can see in this folder here that we've got all of our individual tracks in the session exported, but we're gonna take this one step further, re-export these using some different settings so that the people on the other end that we're gonna be sharing this with have a little greater control. So I'm just going to highlight all of these and put them in their own folder. 
I'm going to name this wet bounces, meaning for that, like wet versus dry. Wet means all of the effects and everything that we had on the individual channels are included on these tracks. And now we're gonna go back to the session. So because we've exported all of these files out exactly as they are in our session, they're coming with the same levels, panning information, and all the processing that we've put on the tracks in this session. This isn't necessarily a bad thing for like say a remix or somebody working with the existing sounds, but for a mixing engineer that you would send these off of, you're sending this out at not the full signal strength, so it's gonna be at quieter volumes. For instance, I'm sending him my overheads at negative 12 decibels. So, so if the engineer wanted to raise that up, there's not a whole lot of headroom to work with because they're already working on a signal that's 12 decibels below the zero dB threshold. And you also typically want to give them a dry signal, meaning that your time-based effects like your reverbs and delays aren't already baked into the tracks so that they've got a little more flexibility to add that after the fact. So to export these in a little better manner, I'll step you through my process. So going to export all of these, you can see at the top, I have this MIDI map track, which really all this is, is it's a MIDI track with a metronome sound. So with this, I can export out a tempo map that the other person that's gonna be receiving the files for the session can make sure that the tempos are lined up properly. So if I solo this, really all it is is a metronome. And the way that I usually send out my tracks is that I'll send them out group by group and I'll disable most of the plugins on here so they have a little more unaltered sound. Now, if you're sending your tracks to a mixing engineer, as I said before, you generally don't wanna give them all of the wet signal. So what we're going to do now is go through all of these channels and disable the plugins that aren't going to be necessary for changing the sound. Starting with the drums, these are all the effects that I have on my drums bus. So the thought process that I use for exporting these tracks out is that I'm going to send them out in a way that they would have been recorded into the software, but not in such a way that they're really overbaked with any additional processing. With the drums, for example, I'm going to turn off the effects that aren't so subtle, which on a bus is gonna be most of the stuff, so I'm gonna turn off this universal audio API channel strip, the compressor and a clipper. I'm also going to turn off all of these effects that I had for different parts of the song for transitions. So with these bypassed, I'm gonna leave on this channel strip emulator. Now, if we go to the individual tracks on the drums, I mentioned this in the previous video that I did on drum mixing. The first few inserts that I have on these plugins are going to be how I would record it if it were coming through analog gear. So as you can see, again, I'm just doing a little bit of channel strip emulation using this plugin, doing some corrective EQ and some light compression. The second half of the plugins that I have here are more for the tone shaping. Now I don't want to back the mixing engineer into a corner by giving them tracks that have already been super processed. So again, I'm going to take off the second half of these tracks and basically just give them what it would be like if you were recording in a studio on a console with analog gear as it was tracked into your recording software. Now there are some exceptions to this. For example, I am doing a pretty radical EQ cut on my overheads and I want to give them a little bit more information in the low end. So I'm just going to take off that low cut filter and just take a little bit of the subtractive EQ to keep in. So if we play just the overheads now, you can hear that this isn't doing a whole lot. It's just doing a little bit of light corrective EQ and a couple decibels of compression as the snare hits. But as I play this, you can hear that the overhead volume is very quiet because we've got it set to negative 12. So I'm actually gonna reset this to zero. So now when we're exporting this track, it's at full volume. And we're actually gonna do that with all of these tracks here. So I'm going to select all of these tracks for the drums, double click on where the level is, and reset those all to zero. I'm going to do this with the panning too because we wanna give these tracks just a clear center file without any panning information. That way the mixing engineer can figure out where they wanna pan those. So with this, I'll just go through every track and again, take off more of the plugins that are doing the more aggressive tone shaping. I'm gonna leave in some of the subtractive EQ cuts that aren't really doing a whole lot of tone shaping. They're just kind of making it sound a little better. I'll turn off the gate and the more exaggerated EQ on the toms. So now that we have all of these tracks at full volume and no panning information, we're going to export all of these out. I'm going to highlight this tempo map track up here because this is going to set my export range. After the export range is selected, I'm going to click the first track that I want to export, hold down shift and go to the last track that I want to export, do command shift R to export. And then up here, instead of doing all individual tracks, now I'm going to do selected tracks only. Now we can click export. Again, the name of the song. So now when we click save, this is going to export all of the tracks at full volume, no panning information, and without any of the big radical EQ changes or compression moves that we've made. So now if we take a look at the track exports, you'll see they're named in the same convention. 
but these are going to be a little better quality for the mixing engineer to work with. Now this is just the drum, so you can go ahead and do this through all of the other tracks as well. So we're gonna follow those same steps in exporting the rest of the session. I won't bore you by stepping through all of that in real time, but I did wanna highlight that the one thing that I do do a little differently is that while exporting the guitars and the bass, I also export a DI track, and I'll send that in mono as well. So as you can see here on the guitars, again, if I set this to full volume and do that for all of these tracks, soloing one of these tracks, and again, panning it so that it's in the center. You can hear the amp sound on this. Now, if you're using an amp simulator like I am on here, for instance, I'm using this Archetype Nolly plugin, I'm going to export these exactly as it sounds in the mix after I've turned off all of the additional EQing and compression moves that I've made on a bus level. Now those are the guitar tones that I've landed on as the producer and writer of the track, so I of course want to send those out to the mixing engineer. But what I'm also going to do is disable the virtual amp and just give the mixing engineer a DI, which is just the straight guitar input into the interface, so it sounds like this instead. Now with this, they can put it through another amp simulator, they can reamp it if they want, or they may use this for another purpose to double stack some of the guitars. But this gives the mixing engineer a little bit more flexibility to work with. Also with this though, communicate with your mixing engineer. If you're dead set on these amp tones that you have in the session, communicate that with them and let them know that you'd prefer those to be used in the mix if they can. I've ran into a few instances where mixing engineers have completely thrown out their recorded amps and replaced it with their own guitars, and sometimes the artist isn't really happy with that because they've spent a lot of time crafting the guitars that they had in the session. So definitely get on the same page with your mixing engineer. So in exporting a DI track, what you would want to do is, again, if we highlight the whole range that we're going to be sending, after we've bypassed the software amp, we're going to be sending the clean DI signal. So again, we'll just export this out. But with this, you would want to send them a mono signal. So right down the center, there's no panning information, but by default, Ableton will send out and export stereo tracks. So this is actually an option here. If you see convert to mono, I'm going to click that on. And now when I click export, what this is going to do is export it as a single file that's mono, and then I'll just name this appropriately. Since I'm using a software bass amp as well, I'm going to be doing the same thing to the bass guitar. So bypassing the effects that I have on here, just hearing the raw bass. So I'm gonna go ahead and export out all of the other individual tracks. And once that's done, we'll just drop them into a new session to see what it looks like. But before I do that, I'm going to also show you that on the master bus here, you can see I've got a good bit of processing because I mixed and mastered this inside of the same session. So you wouldn't want to have your individual tracks going through this bus processing. So by default, when you click individual tracks or selected tracks only, it's not going to send it through your master bus, which you can see there's an option here, include return and master effects. Now you can turn this on when you do all individual tracks. And basically what it'll do is it'll take a little while longer to render, but it's going to send each track through your master bus. So if you have any effects on your master bus that are pertinent to the song, you may want to include those. So really most of the time you'll want this off. But if you're doing a master export here and just exporting the master channel, it's by default going to send it through your master bus so you can see that you can't even click this right here. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and export out all of the rest of the tracks and we'll check back in a second and see what that looks like on a new session. In addition to exporting the individual multi-tracks, if you do want to export these as stems, an easy way to do this is just collapse all of your groups. <clears throat> Keep all of the levels and panning information, select these groups, go to export, and then again, you're gonna do selected tracks only because with these, we're not doing the individual tracks, we're just going through like the groups as a whole, so all of the drums, not the kick, snare, overheads individually. We're gonna keep these stereo. We're going to leave on all the effects and processing that we've done, keep the levels and panning the same as I said, and we're not gonna send these through the master bus, so we're gonna keep this option off. So now if I click export, I'm gonna create a new folder and call this stems, and then just call this song one, and it'll name the files afterwards. And this will allow whoever you send these stems to to literally just drop that into their session and all the levels are going to be the same as you have in your session. The only thing that you haven't included is the bus processing. Assuming that your song is already mixed, this is how you would export for stem mastering as well. So now that I've exported out all of the individual track files in the manner that we just talked about, I'm going to re-import these into a brand new session just to make sure everything exported correctly. It's always good to double check your work before you're sending it out to somebody. So I have a brand new session here. I'm just going to open up the folder where we've exported all of these tracks to. 
select all of them. It looks like there's 31 tracks. Hold down Command while I'm importing these into here so it puts them all on the individual tracks. Then we'll wait for the waveforms to populate. I'm going to minimize all these tracks, expand the name so we can see what we're looking at. I'm actually going to take this MIDI map tempo track, put this at the top just so I can verify that the tempo is correct. Then I'm going to go through and mute all of these DIs. I believe there's five of them, six including the bass. That way when I hit play on these, I can kind of verify that it's got a good rough mix. I'm going to turn down the master volume because these were all exported at full volume, so it's going to be really loud if everything plays all at once. So I'm going to solo the tempo track that we exported, change this to 111 just to make sure that everything is in sync and that it's linked up with the host metronome. Sounds good. So let's expand all these, take a quick look at the waveforms for all of them. Let's play a part of the song just to make sure that everything sounds like it's there. So it sounds unmixed, but we can definitely hear all of the elements there. I'm just going to go through and scroll through the waveforms, make sure that my DIs are mono in case they do need to be reamped. Making sure all of these are named logically. It doesn't really help if you send out a bunch of folders that say audio 1, audio 2, audio 16. And then it's good to step through each one of these, solo them individually, just to make sure that they're all consistent and that they've exported correctly. So it looks good. Now what we can also do is I group all of these together as just the individual tracks minimize these in a folder and turn all of this off. I can go to those stems that we exported and this should be basically a recreation of the mix. I'll pull these up in the file folder that we exported them to. Do the stems. Same thing, drag these back in. Put them at the beginning of the song. And now these ones, since we exported out at the volumes that they were in the original session, once I hit play on this, it should sound more or less the same as the original session did, minus the bus processing. Bring the master volume back up, and now play in what I believe is the chorus here. That sounds a lot more like the original session. So this is something that you could send off to a mastering engineer and have them do stem mastering. The stems are also great for remixing. If you send those out, you have the guitars on a single track, drums on a single track, vocals, etc. So it's really easy to chop those up and take them in and out of the mix. The only other thing that I'll do when I'm exporting out individual tracks is I'll send out the auxiliary sends as well. So any of your time-based effects, parallel compression, parallel effects, things like that, those are handy to have as well. The engineer can always kind of recreate that on their own end, but it's good to have those for reference. It's also a good idea to print out a rough mix of the song that you can send to the mixing engineer as a reference. That way they can hear where you want the song to kind of go in a certain direction. So those are pretty much the basics and some advanced features of exporting tracks in Ableton. Like I said earlier, you can pretty much use the same methodology in other DAWs as well. It's important to communicate with the people that you're going to be sending the tracks to so that you know what kind of file format and sound that they're going after when they want to receive those files. As I mentioned earlier, you don't want to back anybody into a corner by baking in too much of the processing on specific tracks. Unless it's for a very specific purpose, then you want them to use that particular effect. So it's always good to send out the clean tracks, make sure they're level balanced and don't really have panning information into it so that the mixing engineer has full control of sculpting that in the final process. So thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Drop me a comment in here if you have any questions that I can help answer or any different ways that you have of exporting files. I do a new video each week on production techniques and how-tos, so please subscribe and stay tuned for those. But thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.